That's what it is. This day just got even better. What's what's that? Ex Penn State President Graham Spanier was just found guilty of felony child endangerment, stemming from the way he handled the Jerry Sandusky child sex abuse incidents. Officials say Spanier was alerted of a 2001 incident of Sandusky sexually assaulting a young boy in a Penn State shower, but Spanier did not report it to police. He argued his actions did not put any child in danger. The jury felt differently after 12 hours of deliberations found the 68-year-old guilty of felony child endangerment. Should have cut a deal, Graham. You should have cut the deal they put in front of the other guys, but your hubris sunk you. You could have pled down to misdemeanor and had no jail time. And now, you blow it. Now your ass <laughs> you is going it. away. Now you're going away. Now that that's that's felony child endangerment for Graham Spanier. How many years guilty, does that get you? Guilty, guilty, guilty. All three of them. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Pop the pop the Budweisers, pop the Blue Moons, call your daughters, call your fathers, call your friends, call everybody. Mark Burley's got a no-no brewing. <laughs> we'll be back on the Bernstein and Golf Show on 670 The Score. <laughs> That's just great news. And after all this, after five years and after everything that happened, that Graham Spanier, st- he, he stuck out that chin and said, you're not going to get me. You don't have the goods on me. You can't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. These other guys can take that plea with every continuance and every technicality, and now he's guilty of a felony, and I hope that there's a little stripey hole time. I hope. Jail. Yet too. <laughs> I was going to say. You know that that might be a a, a tetherball game that they play on the inside, a uh, little 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 stripey hole action. That's no. for for those uh, of us who've been who've been close to these cases and been following what's going on. You got to understand what it means that all three of those administrators, all three, are guilty, are guilty of crimes because of what this does to the overall narrative involving somebody whose name begins with a letter P. Dyer, Indiana. This is Jim on the score. Jim, I, I'll, I'll never get it. The guy called in like 30 seconds ago, and then they disappeared. Sometimes you got to run and do something else really quickly. Then why, why, then why pick up a phone and call a sports radio station if all of a sudden you got to go run and do something else? I feel like they could time it out, you know? I feel like maybe Tanny's rejoin was, was shorter than normal. His question, he was going to ask, why take so long? Because of the way... This, with every single continuance, there was there were numerous filings, numerous attempts at at trying to get mistrials, attempts at trying to use their legal representation questions as some sort of a wedge issue, whether or not the lawyer for the university could also be considered the lawyer for the defendants, and trying to to peck away at each of the charges. There were piles of charges against them, and eventually he decided not to take a deal. And to try his hand at trial, and he lost. And good for them, too, because you have to know what's been going on in Happy Valley. And you, you heard a little bit of it when we had trustee Anthony Lubrano on. Because that was a tough day. In, in this vacuum, after the death of Paterno and everything else that happened, there has sprung up the most foul and noxious of truther theories. That, this, that none of the victims, none of it ever happened. That Sandusky was innocent. Sandusky was railroaded. It was all made up by victims to get the the over a hundred million dollars in settlements that had been paid out by the university, and it had it, this got traction. And there have been actual groups affiliated with the university who have worked to pack the board of trustees with people who believe in these conspiracy theories, who believe to some level that this was all trumped up and all made up and all fake news to try with the ultimate goal of exonerating the name of Joe Paterno to get the statue out of mothballs and return the statue to glory and return the Paterno name to glory. Even one of Paterno's kids and his widow were trying to get back on the board themselves to try to do this. They created an alternate history. And in that, that under-oxygenated pocket that is central Pennsylvania, this... this well, some very this, smart people who... You know, whenever this comes up, they went to Penn State and they still own it. No, and it's it's really, it's really, really bad. And it mm-hmm. continues to infect the university. So when juries of their peers send these guys, they convict 
the people who were working in lockstep with Joe Paterno, convict them of crimes against children. It takes away this, oh, it was just Sandusky. He was just operating right. by himself, and nobody Rogue knew. Assistant. This is what you listen to the Paterno family, and that's their, all, their main talking point is, oh, well, people don't realize how good good these child predators are at fooling everybody around them no 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 for years they knew and now it's proven that they knew that schultz knew that curly knew that spanier knew to a criminal level of failure to act felony level failure to act and guess who else knew joe paterno knew too So while these guys are still alive, Paterno got off easy. He was able to get out of here and die and let people make excuses for him. He got off easy. But screw all of these people. They should all burn in hell. And then if if Graham Spanier wants to cool his ass off in a prison somewhere and take stock, apparently as he was walking out of the courtroom today, reporters were shouting at him, what about the victims? What about the victims? And you know what? True to form, he said nothing. Go away, Graham Spanier. Go die in a prison somewhere. You and Sandusky. I mean, this is this is the the blow that this is to the crazy people. To this 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 not gonna stop this hive of crazy. I mean, they'll, they'll come yeah, up with talk they'll about, twist it. We talk about the rationalization, where you know, you, if you're talking to a rational person and present them with uh, evidence or or facts or keys to your argument. The rational people will say, all right, you might have a point there. But if they they are crazy, then this, this won't stop anything. It might embolden some others to say, all right, this is a, this is a witch hunt, and they've completed it now. So, yeah, this is, um, it's, it's, you know, it's sad still because it happened. You know, it's sad still because there are survivors of that monster. And I know nothing has been proven to this point, but I, I don't believe that, some some while out, you know, defensive coordinator was the only one getting down like this Come in on. that entire situation. So no, this is, there's this. still there's still people who have to see these headlines, who went through, actually lived through it, and and have to you know have to have that scab torn off once again. This this those are the people I think about in these this, times. Okay, the three oh nine. Stop taking joy in the suffering of another human being. I take plenty of joy in the suffering of somebody who is guilty of the of. Felony child endangerment on multiple levels. You know how many people were victimized because this person who was nominally in charge of the welfare of of an entire student body didn't act, not take joy in that? There's something completely wrong with you to not take joy in that, to be justice being served. These are monsters. These are monsters that allowed children to be preyed on. They knew what they were doing. They protected a football program. They put, they protected a, a coach and a program. They didn't care. They knew, and they didn't care. Stop taking joy in Graham Spanier's suffering. Never, never, ever, ever, never. And there's something wrong with you for not, unless you got some other vested interest. That's I mean, something wrong with you. If you can't find some sort of 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 well, justice, justice versus satisfaction. Just, yeah, I was saying the justice part of it. You you want all criminals to be brought to justice, and and like I said, the the, the people who have suffered through this. And you talk about a monster. Unfortunately, with these kinds of crimes, monsters create monsters too. You know, you 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 get people who are abused by. We've already the, seen the, it in one of Jerry Sandusky's cre- 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 adopted you know, sons. Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden. They think that is the way that they should live their lives as well. So the justice part is definitely important. I don't know what's, what you're, you're just not listening here. The two on seven. It might be a misdemeanor. It's a felony. He was convicted on felony charges. Mm-hmm. The others got misdemeanor charges because they, because they copped a plea. Yeah. This guy was insulated. He put his big boy pants See, on and thought he wasn't going to, you know, here, you can't come after me. That's because. Teflon Don style. If, if you follow the evidence of the case and you looked at how they argued it. 
they, that they were able to use Spanier and Curley, or yeah, excuse me, able to use Schultz and Curley to say, well, yeah, they knew, but in the terms in which they discussed it with their boss, he was betting that they right. were going to be his insulation. Right. If you actually looked at the emails and the conversations and what was put into evidence, but what happened was a jury saw through it. That he thought he had reasonable doubt, a reasonable cover to say, well, and even he admitted all the wrongdoing. And where he was being tried, too. Just, just not criminal wrongdoing. Oh, sure. I mean, that's why these guys, you commit the crimes that you commit because you feel like you, you know, you're in a safe split, you're in a safe place. I, I, I don't want to use safe space on a day like this, but you feel like you're all good. You know, you are Penn State football to the death. You are a Penn State University, even if it's not the football part of it. There's still a lot of pride that, that people take in going to a big-time college such as Penn State University. So he, he thought that where he was being tried and what the trial was all about and, and the people that he you know, was aligned with, you, hopefully you get five or six guys or girls on a jury and, and they're you know, waving their white and blue pom-poms under the, underneath the, you know, the pew, and you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's a Penn State guy. Give a little, give a little, a little salute to that person and you keep it moving. <laughs> And then all of a sudden they, they slap those bracelets on you like that. That is a that is a reckoning like none other when you're sitting on high and you think that you're going to be able to get away with things like that. And then, you know, sometimes Such sometimes a ruling comes down. Sometimes the good things happen. You know, I'm not a guy who believes in karma. Uh, and it's not because I wish I were, but I'm not. uh, Yeah. yeah. And it's not because I just want to run around doing poor things to people and treating people poorly. I've just seen a lot of people, you know, who, who I thought had been the salt of the earth, have bad things happen to them. And I've seen a lot of sick kids in my life. So, you know, I'm not a karma guy, but sometimes, sometimes you, you, you feel like the people who deserve to get something will get it. This makes it even better. The state prosecutor was Laura Ditka. Oh, my friend. It was. Ah, uh, shut up. It's Lawyer Koch. <laughs> Laura Ditka, successful prosecution. <laughs> she said they took a gamble. They weren't playing with dice, hey, they this, were playing with kids. This is your chance of being found innocent, my buddy. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> spit her gum out. Then she right, threw her right, gum. Right, right, right. He's, he's spitting on everyone in the jury. <laughs> She's got a magnificent mustache, my friend. And all of a sudden, for some reason, Johnny Morris is the bailiff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on out. <laughs> Why is Mickey Mouse the bailiff? Got some documents for you to sign. <laughs> Mickey Mouse was co-hosting the Dicka show this entire time. It's my guy Johnny. Hey, how's it going? All right. Oh, dude, right. every Sunday morning it was me, my pops, Johnny Morris, and Mike Dicka sitting there listening and talking football. Every the 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 impersonations are so spot on because it would be always be some two hundred ninety five pound it's, five foot three guy would stand up. Coach, there was a time it's where you Dicka's niece. Where you, She's Dicka's niece. Oh, oh, yeah, because it is Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's the Dicka fam. That's the Dicka fam bam right it there. It is Laura Dicka. Let's there go. is any striking resemblance to the clutch. I'm back on the Dicka side of things now. He, he can he can love you know wow. the things that he loves politically all he wants now. Me and you are riding again, Coach. I'm hey, let's let's go over and get a paddle steak, my friend. <laughs> let's get the Dicka dinner series going back again with Laura Dicka. Like just talk football that, with Laura Dicka. That rules. Nice. There it is. Yes, and that yes. was Laura Dickey, yep, actually. That, that, that was wasn't even Mike. Mike. <laughs> Completely coincidental. Her office is also in Washington <laughs> Avenue. And she also has problems with Neil from North Lake. How about that? Nice. That's, that is no coincidence. The coach's niece takes down Graham Spanier. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Drove over with a golf cart. <laughs> My friend, is she orange? Is she orange? Well. Does she have an orange tint, my friend? No. No, that's... No, but... Good for her. <laughs> Good job well done. I'll stop there. Outstanding. <laughs> job well done. <laughs> She's got a little Rick Camp in her. Yeah. I see that, too. You know, stout and powerful. That's... That, yeah. I, I, I would definitely... I definitely see that in her celebrity mix. There is some Rick Camp. <laughs> What happened that, to today? That's the whole closing argument right there. That was, 
Those are entire clothes. It's my clothes. cousin Vinny part two. <laughs> that's, that's the clothes. Get your mouth shut. <laughs> Gang. <laughs> yeah. We prefer that you actually call for an objection in my courtroom. <laughs> Get your mouth shut, gang. Nice. nice. So, I mean, yep. hey, justice was served today. Justice, and, and since it is a felony, you would hope that the sentencing is in alignment with what that kind of charge would bring. Hopefully. There it is. <laughs> he will be on the appeal. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of time does that does that bring? Do we know? Probably not enough. Well, you know. It doesn't. I have not seen a, the anything about the sentencing phase or what the possibilities would be. <laughs> this from the what is it the six three zero? Laura stated he's sixty eight years old and he's not getting a whole hell of a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly true. All of a sudden, she's like dragging Stan Thomas by the nose throughout the court. Like, look at this. <laughs> look at this big piece of crap right here. We drafted on it. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Well. Hopefully he gets it. That's 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 just great. I mean, that brings it all all oh, the way Grand around. Spaniard. But just oh, just, oh the dick part. The, okay. The whole like, thing, after all, Grand after Spaniard gets all is said and done, bring it all back together. after all of a sudden, now the president of the university is 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 charged with a felony, prosecuted by Ditka. Law and order, Ditka. <laughs> not, not law and order SVU, but law and order Ditka, where you're 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 charting out plays <laughs> and you're sending people's asses to the pokey. <laughs> There it is. Let's go. <laughs> Chicago all around pass. you. <laughs> Get out of my office. Hey, I want to read The Man in the Mirror. My friend. 